Have you ever bought a pair of sneakers that you thought you absolutely loved only to regret buying them further down the line? Well, some of the sneakers on this list I regretted buying almost immediately, but I hope you can learn from my mistakes so you don't waste your money like I did. Also, let me know your biggest sneaker regret. It would be funny to see how many people regret buying the same sneakers. If you like this video at any point, please do leave it a like. And now that's all out the way, let's get into the sneakers. So we're gonna start off with one of my lighter regrets first and then move our way up to some of the bigger ones. But first up, we've got the New Balance 574. Now this shoe wasn't really my style when I bought them, but I decided to buy them anyway. The hype around New Balance sneakers definitely got the best of me, and I wanted to see what the fuss was about. Now don't get me wrong, I really did like the look of these, and I still do, and I loved the colorway I got them in, they were comfortable, and I thought they looked great just not when they were on my feet. Whenever I wore them with my outfits, I never really felt like myself in them, so I never wanted to wear them. They did look nice on the shelf though, but I didn't buy them as an ornament. I bought them to wear, so I sold them. And I suppose this is a lesson to not be swayed by trends if that trend is not really your style. Of course, it's great to try new things and you might try some things out that you wouldn't have tried out otherwise and fall in love with them, but I knew deep down that these weren't gonna work for me, so I shouldn't have got them. But this regret is minor compared to the next one, the Common Projects Achilles Low. So I went through a massive Common Projects phase for about six years, and they were the only shoes I wore, especially the white Achilles Low. But have you ever had it where you love an item so much that you want to wear it all the time, but you don't want to be seen in that item all the time, so you think it's a good idea to buy that same item again in a different colorway? And nine times out of ten, well, for me anyway, I always have one colorway that I prefer over the other, and I don't want to wear the one that I don't like as much. Well, that that was the case here when I bought a pair of black and white common projects to get a different look from my white pair. I didn't like them as much as the white pair from the get-go, but I told myself I had to have another look, so I kept them anyway. But every time I looked down at my feet, I just wish I was wearing the white pair, and I felt a little bit sick looking at them. I'm only joking, they weren't that bad, but I didn't really like them. And then after a few wears, I stopped wearing them and then went back to wearing the white pair every day anyway. What a waste of £300. But at least these sneakers were in line with my style at the time, so they did make sense, unlike this next pair that were definitely not my style, the Nike React Element 55. So this was another purchase that was definitely influenced by hype. Sneaker hype is one I'm so bad on, clothing not so bad, but sneakers I can't help myself. But I am getting better these days, at least I tell myself that anyway. But these sneakers in the 87s were trending about three or four years ago now, and when I first saw them I didn't know what was going on. I thought they were absolutely hideous at first, but hype has a funny way of clouding your judgment. To be fair, some people did look good in these, but I should have left them to them. But these shoes didn't go with my style at all, I didn't really like them, and I think I only wore them once. And I should have sent them back to the store as soon as I got them, but I didn't want to admit to myself that I'd made a bad choice. Have you ever been there where you buy something and you don't really like it, but you tell yourself you'll wear it one day, but you know deep down that you definitely won't? Luckily, I did manage to sell these, but for a pretty big loss, but I had learnt my lesson. Well, you'd have hoped I had, wouldn't you? But I did the exact same thing again with this next pair, the Nike Vapor Max. So I saw some guy wearing these on Pinterest and I thought he looked great in them, so I decided decided to pick them up. Sadly, they didn't make me look like the guy off Pinterest and they didn't go with anything in my wardrobe. And to be honest, I knew they wouldn't before buying them, but I bought them anyway. I want to blame the guy off Pinterest for making me buy these and I do a little bit, but it was my fault. I impulse bought them off that photo alone and I only have myself to blame. You'll be pleased to know though that I was more sensible this time around. I only tried them on with my outfits at home on carpet and I didn't take off any of the tags, so I was able to send them back and get a full refund. Not like this next pair where I ripped off all the tags as soon as I got them. Never do that. I still do this too much, but it's the Birkenstock Arizona. Now I know this isn't a sneaker, but they go on your feet and I regret buying them. So they're going on this list. Now I'm not someone who enjoys wearing a sandal unless I'm on holiday. So I don't know why I got them in the first place. But yeah, I thought I'd wear these out and about in the UK with a pair of socks and look a little bit edgy. The thing was the socks and sandal look wasn't something I ever felt comfortable in and it wasn't something I loved either. I'm not anti socks and sandals. I think some people look great in them, but it wasn't really a look that I was really excited by, if that makes sense. But I think a lot of my past mistakes were down to my job. Because I was posting on social media, I felt I needed to keep things exciting, keep buying new things and trying new things out, even if I didn't really like them much. These days,
days, I've stopped doing that and I feel so much better about it. And I've saved myself a lot of money as well. Luckily, I have got some wear out of these. I have worn them on holiday and I'll continue to wear them on holiday in the future. So they will come in handy or come in footy because they go on your feet. Anyway, they're a lot more useful to me than this next pair was because this pair spent their whole life in their box. And it's the Nike Dunk. So when I was a young lad at school, about 13 or 14, I really wanted a pair of Nike Dunks. There was a colorway I really had my eye on. I think they were black, green and white. And I just wanted them really badly. So I saved up all of my pocket money. I saved up for ages and I finally had enough to get a pair. Unfortunately, at the time, all the stores didn't have the colorway I wanted, but I told all my friends I was getting a pair of Nike Dunks. So I didn't want to come back empty handed. I shouldn't have bought them and waited until they came back in stock. But you know what it's like when you're a kid, you tell all your friends you're going to get something. So you want to get it. I swear the shop assistant had no problem talking me around into buying a colorway that I didn't really want as well. He must have been on commission and had no problem taking my savings as a child. Anyway, when I got back home, I felt sick and angry at myself for buying this pair, but I didn't want to send them back as well. I thought I'd grow to love them. And to make things worse, the first day I brought them into school, so the next day to show all my friends, by the end of the day, someone had stolen them out of my locker. So I didn't even get the chance to warm to them. And I've got an idea who it was. So if you're watching this, I haven't forgotten. And where was that person when I bought this next pair? Because I could have done with them stealing these. It's the Adidas d S. So I went through a phase where I was looking for a sock-like trainer and I ended up buying these. And I don't know what drew me to them and I still don't know what drew me to them. I still don't like them, but sometimes I make some weird decisions. That's why these days I make a wish list, put items on there that I'm interested in and then sit on them for a few months before buying them. That way I'm always happy with my purchases. Well, most of the time. But anyway, depending on how you look at this, it could be a good thing or a bad thing. But after a week of having these, I was walking in a field with my camera, taking some photos and I stepped in a huge puddle. And I mean a huge puddle that was full of mud. I went in up to my mid shin and the shoes came out completely ruined. And the puddle came out of nowhere too. It was like nature was disgusted with these trainers and wanted to destroy them. And if you don't like the look of these brand new, then imagine them covered in mud and completely out of shape. The netting made them really impossible to clean. And yeah, they looked horrible after I tried to clean them. Anyway, these were in such a bad way that nobody wanted to buy them off me. Unlike this next pair that flew off the shelf as soon as I put them on Depop, the Nike Blazer 77 Mid. So I bought these sneakers when they were really popping off, but I made a really stupid decision when I bought them. For some reason, I thought it would be a good idea to size down half a size for no reason whatsoever. Hopefully they were in the sale and they just didn't have my size and that's the only reason I bought them in this size but I can't be sure on that. But I should have sent them back but I was so excited to show them off on this channel and make a video about them that I didn't end up doing that. Obviously because they were too small they were very uncomfortable. I could probably only wear them for about 15 minutes before it felt like my toes were going to fall off. I was like Jen out the IT crowd if you've seen that. You know the episode with the red shoes where she can't get them on? Yeah that was kind of me with these shoes. Luckily, the video I did with them did really well and kind of kickstarted my channel, but I would have preferred to make that video with a pair of shoes that actually fit me properly. But at least I've learned a lesson and I didn't make the same mistake again with this next shoe, but I feel a little bit bad for including this next shoe on the list. It's the Nike Air Max 90. So I think the Air Max 90 is one of the most iconic and best sneakers out there. So why is it on this list? Because it's another style of sneaker that I love the look of, but doesn't suit my style. So I bought them and I don't wear them. I need to remind myself sometimes that I can appreciate sneakers without having to buy them all. So why didn't I just send them back, you ask? Well, on this pair, I used Nike ID to customize them. So once you do that, you can't send them back. But when I was making these on the Nike website, I was telling myself in my head, yeah, you're going to wear these all the time. You're going to look great in them. But deep down, I knew I wouldn't. But I've had these for probably about three years now and I've worn them outside maybe about three times. I just can't bring myself to sell them though because I designed them. Well, I say I designed them. I pretty much colored them in, but they still feel a bit special to me. So don't forget to tell us your biggest sneaker regret. It would be great to hear yours. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave it a like. If you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and I will see you all next week. Thank you so much for watching everyone. See you later.